Hello, today we are going to be taking a look at this quite interesting analog and digital UHF radio that is submersible, so basically you can put it underwater and nothing bad will happen. It is commercial grade radio that require license, but that British company called Antel is extremely interesting because in their portfolio you can purchase ATX rated radios that are working in PMR446 and do not require any licensing. And what does it mean? That's mean you can purchase radios that are in blue color, ATX rated, license free, analog and digital, and they can be used at the oil rig and the build quality you can directly compare to the Motorola ATX radios. So very important company. This radio have model number DX485M and basically the whole 400 series is going to be very similar and you will find the license free version also. But this is a commercial grade radio. So we are going to be taking a look. And here is what we've got inside. Let me take out all the goodies. Let's begin from assembling our radio. Here we've got our beautiful battery with this belt clip. And here you've got the model number, just in case you would be interested in purchasing a replacement. And here you can remove the belt clip. So this is how it's presenting. Here we've got our beautiful radio. We've got a similar system like on the Motorola with the gasket. We've got information that it is compass safe at distance of one meter. And we've got our model number. To assemble our battery, we just click it in place, just like that. And this is how the radio is presenting. We've got a a regular SM connector, so we are not going to get any problems like with the Motorola radios. This is a UHF version, and it's presenting really nice. Just take a look, this is a decent length. Here you can compare length of the stock Motorola and our new Intel, and if you take a look, they are exactly the same. But to be honest, I can tell you that the Intel feel much nicer because it is less stiff and it's basically not poking you. So this is a good one. And of course the Motorola one has got a custom connector so you can forget about attaching any different one. You are going to be forced to be using only the Motorola one. Size of this radio remind me very much the Motorola GP388, which of course got full-size keypad. This one does not, but they are making version with the keypad, so this is a not issue. But of course on the Motorola here you are going to be having the antenna, so the layout is a little bit different, but I would compare it to the Motorola 388. Here we've got our side, we've got the PTT button with a nice click. We've got our programmable one. On top we've got a button for declaring emergency. We've got our rotary channel selector that rotate 360 degree and do not have channel marking. So most likely you can have more than 16 channel in one zone. Here we've got our power switch with the volume adjustment, but we are not going to be turning it on yet. Because on bottom we've got quite interesting thing. We've got a place that I would assume is going to be designed for placing like your own label, like with the DMR Radio AD or Agency. And you can print something on the label printer and it's being nicely hidden away, so I extremely enjoy that. On side we've got one of the most important feature. You are going to be finding here the shoulder mic connector. 
and it is extremely interesting because as you can see we've got that rugged multi-pin connector that give you a IP68 rating I believe but at the same time for programming you can use a regular micro USB cable so you have absolutely no need to purchasing special separated cable but ability to program it with regular micro USB in any way do not compromise your ability to use professional shoulder mic just like on this Motorola but here you would need to find a special cable here for programming regular micro USB absolutely beautiful but let's put it back and most likely we are going to be getting our IP rating with this port being closed either with that protective cap or with attached shoulder mic and yes they are making weatherproof shoulder mic this one is as you can see submersible here we've got our front firing speaker most likely here we've got the microphone here we've got our beautiful OLED screen that is fully visible even at daylight with a lot of sun and we've got our soft keys that are going to be changing meaning depending of what is being displayed on the screen so this is concluding like a visual log here we've got our charger and you can take a look at the voltage just in case you would lose one it is a 12 volt at 0.5 amp and it's using a standard DC barrel jack here we've got our Intel charger and you can attach it to a like wall absolutely beautiful we've got polarity and voltage mark I respect that and if you would be wondering here is the model number but this is ending up things that I like about it because it is extremely lightweight and you've got absolutely no idea by removing it just with one hand and I do not appreciate it I extremely enjoy if I can remove radio like have it on the back and just grab my radio like this here you would have to attach it to something let's try to plug it to our beautiful power bank and let's see how it's presenting so we've got a green indicator and most likely after dropping yes we've got a red one so this is how it's presenting absolutely beautiful but it could be more heavy now it's time to turn on our radio and we are going to be using the volume key and as you can see we've got our beautiful logo we've got a melody and here our radio boot up as you can see while I'm changing the volume adjustment we've got it on our screen since we've got 360 degree let's take a look how many channels we've got program and as you can see we are going around so most likely you will have ability to program more than 16 in one zone here you can see the screen at the close-up of course that blinking is not visible through your naked eye that screen remind me very much the Motorola SL1600 and here the screen is hidden behind the plastic so it is extremely hard to crack just take a look and it is basically a same style I very enjoy both of those radios here the resolution is much higher and you can even see a tiny details like the frequency if we hit the information button we can see that the user ID of the radio is 2 and only that soft keys is being enabled and we can press it to get back to change the power someone programmed the orange emergency button as the quick press and here we've got the high like high power and the low like low power we've got our battery status and the information antenna for 
receiving signal strength. Let's compare this radio across couple well known. Here we've got the Hytera from the BP515 series, I believe. Yes, this is 515. And here is how it's presenting. For the Hytera, for programming, you need to have a special cable that is using that side port. Just like that. But for general recharging, you can use USB C port. So this is a very nice thing. But to be honest, I enjoy more the idea of having just a regular micro USB for programming. So you can easily do that in field and you do not need to spend money for extra cable. Of course, this is normal full power radio. So let's compare it against the Motorola DP2600. And as you can see, it's got a smaller footprint, but we've got no compromise on the power. So this is how it's presenting. And to be honest, it feels really decent. Let's take a look and compare it across the Motorola DP665D. This is a license-free digital DPMR. And as you can see, it feel a little bit smaller. So yeah, it's got like a good size. It really remind me that Motorola GP3800. Here we can compare it across the Kenwood ProTalk. And here you've got the dimension. I do not like the Kenwood because of the connector. Here is how they compare. And that rat tail antenna, I honestly do not like. Here we've got the analog classic. We've got the Motorola GP340. So you can see how beefy that one is. But yeah, this is also a very good commercial radio. Here you can see it across the Motorola XL1600. And you can see how small the SL is. Here you can take a look. So the Motorola is much smaller. But if you are in market for covert radio, radio that will not bring any suspicion during walking through any checkpoint, then of course the Motorola SL4000 is the one to go. But you are giving up the analog. This is DMR only. And here I've got the extended battery. But if you are using the standard capacity, then that go without that bulge. So this is the smallest radio that I own. And it's working really great. And I highly recommend you checking my video about it. So here how they are comparing. But of course, on both radios from the SL series, you are not going to be finding that rugged multi-pin connector. So they are designed for different use case. And of course, we need to grab our Motorola Ion and just use it as a reference point. And here you can see how it's comparing. So this is a really beefy radio. This is how it's presenting. Of course, you can remove the belt clip. So it's going to be nicely fitting your pocket. And this is how it's presenting. And of course, on both of those two radios, you are going to be finding that beautiful rugged connector that I just love. That was a quick look at the Intel DX400 series and compare it, it across different radios that I own and use. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you find it interesting. See you next time and bye bye.